Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'd like to feature a new speaker system that I'm offering to the DIY build community. And this is called the Saborin Series System 1309. And it's a turnkey design that includes the base cabinet, front horn, and passive crossover. So in this video, I'd like to go through and show you the objective test data and see uh, if this is something that you might want to consider building yourself. So let's get started. So I'm going to just walk through the specification sheets for the base cabinet, the uh, front horn, and the complete test results for the integrated system between the base cabinet and the horn. So just to summarize, the base cabinet that I've developed for this is uh, 1303, and it uses a 12 inch woofer, base reflex, trapezoidal enclosure. It's an 80 hertz tuning frequency with a rear 10 centimeter port. And so it fits the aesthetics of the Saborin horn number 1300, which sits on top. And the crossover point is 300 hertz. So the goal with this project was to offer a DIY solution that's easy to construct, but offers the sound performance similar to very, very high-end, large-scale horn speaker systems. This provides an opportunity for um, the enthusiast to get uh, that sound. And when I say that sound, I'm specifically referring to the uh, large-scale presentation that's offered with a large format front horn. And so when you experience this, it's quite a revelation uh, particularly with live performances and uh, it provides a pattern control through the vocal range. So what that means is that you're limiting the early sidewall reflections and you're hearing more of the direct sound. And so that has the effect of offering more clarity through the mid-range and that's really only achievable with a uh, front horn that's providing that pattern control. And so like I mentioned, when you purchase the plans, you'll receive the passive crossover schematic, the detailed assembly drawings for the base cabinet as well as the horn. And so let's get started and we'll look closely at the objective test data. So I'm going to show you the test data for the finished system, starting with the frequency response. And so I've shown the port output here. And the response is relatively flat with a minor dip at around 2 kilohertz. And we have good extension out to around 12.5 kilohertz where it drops down about 5 dB. Um, looking at the impedance curve, sorry. Looking at the impedance curve, we have a tuning frequency of 32 hertz for the base cabinet. And as it transitions into the 300 hertz crossover point, you can see it's a very flat impedance profile which is very tube amplifier friendly and there's no ripples which would indicate any kind of uh, mechanical or acoustical resonance in the system. Uh, burst decay, this is taken in my studio and so it's gated um, in, a, in a medium sized room so you can see that it's, it's a clean result with the exception of some uh, resonances in the 12k region. Looking at the off-axis, you can see, like I mentioned earlier, this is of the horn only, and you can see that it's providing pattern control down to about 400 hertz, which um, through the vocal range, you're, you'll see that it, it um, is providing that pattern control, and it has a consistent off-axis. It does narrow a little bit um, at around 6 to 8 kilohertz, and then it widens again uh, to provide wide treble coverage, um, you can see there it's about a 90 to 100 degree listening window right out to around 15 kilohertz. So good good results there. Uh, looking at distortion, so how I've done this is uh, I've, I've done intermodulation distortion using, uh, I think it's about a 20 band test signal. So it's a very uh, good test against noise floor and uh, this is going to represent uh, low level detail retrieval from your from your speaker and I'm testing it at three different SPL levels at 90 dB, 95 dB and 100 dB. And so you can see here through the low frequency we're getting um, the noise floor is 55 dB down. Uh, the worst case area in the frequency 
uh, spectrum is around 500 hertz. And then as we increase the SPL level, we can see the noise floor rise in a linear fashion with the overall out output SPL. And so we're consistently getting low distortion that's 55 uh, dB down, even at uh, 100 dB. Moving on to the high frequency, you can see here that the performance is even better with uh, full 60 dB down when we're playing at 90 dB SPL at one meter. And then as we increase the SPL, our intermodulation performance is at 55 dB down. And then that's consistent even at 100 dB. And so we can see that the uh, planar transducer is providing uh, very low distortion even at high SPL. Okay, so I should have mentioned what drivers I'm using, which is very exciting actually. The um, Parts Express recently introduced a uh, planar transducer, which is a replica, or basically it's identical to the Neo 8, the BG Neo 8. So Parts Express is offering the GRS PT6825-8 planar transducer, and it's uh, much more affordable. I think they've listed at around 60 US dollars on their site. And so it's exciting news for the DIY community that the planar transducer is now readily commercially available in an affordable uh, price. And in addition to that, this uh, GRS planar is, is able to be horn loaded down to 300 hertz, which is uh, very exciting news for the, the, the DIY community. Um, just the, the 12 inch woofer that I've chosen for this project uh, was a driver that I had on hand, which is the 12 inch Aton Orchestra 12 6, uh, 12 612 woofer. Um, so you can see, actually, I'm going to uh, skip to the bass cabinet performance in particular. Now, I wanted to mention as well that if you are interested in using a different bass driver, then I am able to integrate your driver of choice into this design uh, for a fee and so typically what you would have to do is ship me your base driver and then I would actually mount it into the test cabinet and develop a passive crossover using your base driver however um, this this base driver is actually quite good and you can see by the test results here if we're just looking at the base cabinet we have a raw frequency response that's incredibly linear uh, from about 50 hertz and up and then the port tuning is at 32 hertz and so um, burst decay on this woofer is, is very clean um, I've used a trapezoidal uh, cabinet to minimize standing waves and internal reflections inside the cabinet and then you can see here with the rear flared port so I'm really happy with the overall tonality and refined textured base that I'm getting from this I did a number of tests with this cabinet and I found that uh, not having any insulation inside the cabinet actually produced the best subjective base quality and that it was um, more lively, more more dynamic uh, than if I had applied 100% um, fill of polyfill inside the cabinet. So it uh, makes it even simpler as far as the assembly and construction. So looking at distortion in the base cabinet itself, um, it's just repeating what I showed you earlier. So this makes this cabinet solutions suitable for even large listening rooms that require high SPL. Um, so when you purchase the plans, you'll get detailed assembly drawings. The entire construction is 24 millimeter thick Baltic birch plywood. The driver, the base driver is rear mounted for a clean, elegant look. And the rear panel here you can see is removable and that's to allow the install of the base driver. So the large chamfers here that you see on the base cabinet those are optional they don't compromise the mechanical rigidity of the base cabinet i uh, installed these chamfers with my table saw and i did it after the the cabinet was assembled so after i've glued up and assembled the cabinet i actually physically ran the, the entire cabinet through my table saw with the blade set to a 45 degree angle and installed those those chamfers on the bottom and top of the cabinet just to you know make a, a nice um, more softened edge appearance that replicates or 
has the same aesthetic as the Sabrin horn with its nice angles. So the rear chamber is constructed of 12 millimeter thick birch ply and it's um, filled with polyfill. So there you have it. Um, my subjective listening on this, the GRS driver is an equivalent to the Neo 8 in terms of sound quality. I find it actually a little more dynamic than the Neo 8, which is great. Um, I'm not sure if that's a, a function of them using less felt inside the driver. Um, visually, it looks like they have. But uh, so overall, what you're going to get with this speaker is very low distortion, uh, high SPL capability, high sensitivity of 93 dB, which is great for tube amps. You really only need about 3 to 15 watts um, of tube amplifier power to drive this. However, if you have a solid state amplifier, then it does just as well, um, being able to produce extremely dynamic uh, sound, especially with live concerts. So this, this thing is just extremely entertaining when you like, for example, Dave Matthews live at Wrigley stadium. Uh, there's one of my favorite tracks, which is, um, what's the name of the track there? Gold. Is it, uh, I, I can't remember the name of the track, but uh, all of them are great, but there's some just incredible, uh, 15 minute long tracks that you really get into the into the groove and so it's just a wonderful clean sound that um, is on par with much much more expensive systems if you had to uh, purchase this as like a, a, a an off-the-shelf type of speaker so um, this this allows you to get into that category of sound uh, with with uh, very little input costs in terms of the materials required um, the drivers are affordable and it's simply a very un unique uh, design that is allowing us to achieve that type of sound so that's it um, I'll post the link to the plans uh, in the description and so if you have questions please leave a comment and enjoy take care